Hey guys, uh, welcome to another another episode of the podcast. We have Derek Ross joining us here today. Um, Derek, do you want to just give a quick intro of uh, of yourself? And like, I know you're you've a bit of a Noster. You're very involved in Noster. You're a bit of a Noster business with Noster plebs. Um, do you want to just give a quick background? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, I joined Noster in um, mid December and quickly saw a need for some uh, Noster services kind of fell into it. And, um, one thing led to another, ended up starting a Noster and Bitcoin business. And we've been, you know, going strong here for a little over two months, providing Noster uh, services to our users. Uh, our, our main service is a, we can get into it later, but it's an identity service for Noster. And then after that, um, we, we offer uh, other small services, directory services, uh, a replacement for Twitter spaces, uh, lightning address forwarding. And we have some other email addresses and uh, paid relay services that we're working on and planning on launching here sometime uh, in, in the near future. But prior to prior to Noster, I've uh, been a Bitcoiner. Um, I've been in the space for a number of years. Many, many years ago, I started out, but I had no clue what Bitcoin was and disappeared for the better part of a decade and came back in 2020 and have been here since. Yeah, I, th- I think I saw something on you before. Did you say you were like mining in 2009 or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, I mined in 2009. I, I played uh, World of Warcraft back then for many years. I played that game. And I remember one of my guild members is like, hey, you should check this out. Downloaded, installed. It's like it's Internet money. And I was like, all right, I'm a tech geek. That's awesome. Downloaded it. I installed it. I specifically remember running it for months. And finally, after several months, I said, what the hell does this thing do? All it does is make my computer run 24-7. It makes it run hot. I don't know what these Bitcoin things are. Uh, he never told me anything about it, like where to go. Like if I would have went to the Bitcoin talk forum, I would have read and researched and I didn't have time for that. I just had a son that was born and it was too much. And I, I uh, uninstalled it. I deleted it and didn't look back for years. And I specifically remember seeing like Bitcoin, like the reward back then was 50 uh, Bitcoin per block. And I remember seeing that. I absolutely remember. So Hey, that, that's okay. It's a it's a good story. I made a donation to the network. Um, <laughs> my life would have been very different if I would have done research. But hey, that's fine. I, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy to be here now. And how how many bitcoins? Was, you must have had like God. There must uh, have been a lot. Of oh bitcoins. God. Oh God. So much more than I have now. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't be uh, coming to you from my basement. I would be on um, on a. We'd be talking right now. I'd be on some island. In a, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> on a beach or something it, like if i would have kept up with it oh man now i don't i don't know how many i had i had no clue i thought i had found those heart those hard drives a couple years ago because um i i had uh built many new gaming systems since then and going through a box in the garage i found old hard drives and the date on them was like manufacturing uh, date was 2008 so i was really excited and i put those drives in uh, another computer and looked at them and no, there was no Bitcoin, anything, or uh, I think it was Bitcoin QC back then, but there was nothing, nothing like that on those drives. I'm pretty sure because back then, whenever I would uh, build a new system, the old drives, I would physically take them apart, take the platters apart and the discs inside them. I would like make like mirrors in my, in my old house. So yeah, I probably have a, mul- uh, uh, at one point, there was a mirror worth hundreds of millions of dollars that I was you know, looking at and using. But hey, that's okay. It's a good story. I, I, I'm all right. Yeah. Look, at the end of the day, uh, it is it is still early, even like you know what, thirteen, fourteen years later. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely, and that's you know that I I think that you know kind of like today you know we're going to talk about Nostra, and I think we're extremely early in Nostra, even though it's been around for. Um, two years but it really didn't start picking up steam until you know two months ago yeah i like i hadn't heard of it i think i might have heard of it maybe five or six months ago there was some podcast came out but i didn't listen to it and then like it's just you know ever since like the end of december it's just been blown up everywhere yeah but um yeah so do you, do you just want to get into like so like what is Noster? how does it work 
All right, so we like to say, you know, Bitcoin is decentralized money. Well, Noster is decentralized social communication. So it, it's very, very similar to the ethos and, and how Bitcoin works, where there's, you know, public keys and private keys. Your private key signs all your social transactions, just like your Bitcoin private key would sign all your financial transactions. So it works similar like that. Uh, you know, it's decentralized. Instead of running a Bitcoin node, you run... Uh, the, the nodes on Nostra are called relays, um, and anybody and everybody can run a relay. There's anybody and everybody can develop a client, and we use clients to send JSON, like text messages, to relays, and other people connect to relays, and they you know, read your text messages that are sent to the relays it's very 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 simple like i think fiat joff kind of said he's the the father of the nostra protocol said that you know if this is so simple why hasn't it been done before and, and that's kind of it like it is literally so simple because all it is it's like at the technical level it's just web sockets and json messages so what is that that's uh Secure websites and and sending data on websites. That's literally all that it is. It's so 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 simple, and no one's ever done it before for some reason. And like no one's ever built a social protocol from the ground up. You know, we've all been to you know Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all these things. These are platforms that were built on top of HTTP, the, the hypertext transfer protocol, like like the web protocol. So. Noster is a social protocol, and it's built from the ground up to be, you know, it's a communication protocol. It's built from the ground up to communicate on, you know, be social. So it's very different uh, from anything that we've ever used. Um, as I said, it's it's decentralized, but it's also censorship resistant, which, you know, in today's world, you know, people get banned for saying different things, acting different ways, you know, you, People get their accounts nuked left and right from social networks. It happens all of the time, unfortunately. So this this kind of can't happen with Noster. Noster is censorship resistant. Like nobody can nobody can ban you. The only way to ban you would be every single person on the network that runs a client and runs a um, relay would have to ban you. And then still, you could just run your own. I mean, you, you know, you, you can't you can't really be censored in that regard. It, it, it's pretty cool because we f we follow public keys across the network, across the protocol. We don't follow like a, a username or so. If one relay or one client for whatever reason would happen to censor or block or ban you. For whatever that you know, whatever that reason, if that would happen, that's fine. You can use a completely new or different client, use a new set of relays, and all your followers and all your all the people following you are immediately there because they're not they're not connected to you on one server. They're following your public key on any server or any relay that you use. So it, it really really works really well. And we saw this censorship you know resistance uh, test in, in the beginning whenever. I don't want to say beginning, but uh, a month ago, <laughs> uh, whenever a certain app, the Domus app, launched on the App Store, whenever it hit the App Store, it hit you know all over the world, and people from China, China likes uh, you know Chinese people, they 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 need censorship free communication. They they need to be able to communicate, and well, the Chinese government doesn't like that, as as you probably are aware. So after like 24 hours of free, free and censorship resistant communication, China said, hey, Apple, you need to remove this app from our app store. And Apple complied, as always, removed the app. But you know what? Chinese users are still using Noster because that's only one client that was banned. There's tons of other, you know, there's dozens of clients out there and there's 300 some relays out there. It's a moving target. Like the CCP is never going to be able to block Noster from existing, or you or their citizens from using it, because they can connect to other resources outside and inside the the Great Firewall. It's really really cool. So yeah, that Noster is really simple. Um, 
it it's it's like I said, it's just text. So people are coming up with creative ways to host, you know, video and and images. And the clients are the real powerhouse when it comes to to Noster. Uh, that's something that we're kind of not really used to seeing. It's usually the servers that do all the heavy lifting. But here, servers just they just host host data and people connect to it to read it and to write it. That that's really it. Yeah. Okay. That's that's a great overview. So ju- like just on points points of failure. Um... Just get into that a little bit later, just because I have a couple of questions around that. Before, you know, before we go more into the weeds there. Yeah. Um, but just so, just well, I suppose this is kind of related to censorship resistance. But like with regards to relays, so let, let's take you know Trump, Trump getting deleted off Twitter what two years ago now. Let's take it if that was Noster. Like hypothetically. Trump could just run his own relay and everyone could just plug into that if they want to listen to Trump. Like that's, yeah, that's as simple as it. Yeah. Yeah. As simple as that. If, uh, if one, you know, or multiple relays say, Hey, I don't like Trump. I want to block him and they block his private key from communicating to their relay. He just needs to connect to a relay that either allows him or he spins up his own. And then all of his followers now fall. they, add that relay that he's using or the multiple relays that he's using and they start seeing all of his content again. And can, is, is a client able to blanket ban relays? They could. Yeah. A client could a client clients do different things with relays. The majority of them allow you to add your own relays. Um, some of them will, bootstrap or give you a kind of like a default random list of relays to help with the centralization. So not everybody's assigned the same group of relays. So they'll spread them around a little bit. Um, Some clients will pick like the top, you know, out of the top 25 relays, maybe you'll get a random three of those or something like that. Plus their own. There's different things that clients are doing to help users manage relays. Uh, Some clients have like an autopilot feature where they will look at who you're following and make a determination of these are the relays you need to use if you want to communicate with the people that you're following based on the relays that they're using. Because relay management is really like one of the key features of Noster for censorship resistance. But it's also a very new paradigm for people that have never done this type of thing normally when you connect to twitter you don't go in and like manage your twitter servers right you just use what they give you so it's a new concept for people so clients are coming up with a way to handle this they're giving users like they're spoon feeding them but then allowing them to opt out and manage themselves for so if you're a power user you understand all this works you can go in and say i don't want what you're giving me i'm going to handle that myself and and we're seeing clients start to do that too so to answer your question yeah as yes uh if trump's banned and he wants to still use noster he just has to find a new relay or use it or spin up his own and all the users that want to see his stuff they can still do it yeah okay so yeah that that's pretty censorship resistant um, okay. So like with, reg- with regards to Noster, is it like purely because everything you see, like I've, I've used quite a few of the clients now, um, to be honest, like I'm not on iOS. So like, I know Damas is very good, but the only one that I thought was pretty good was, um, Amifest. So that's what I'm using at the moment. Um, and the, how, how they handle the relays is actually, it's, it took a tiny bit of figuring out like more than it should, but that's just cause it's early days, but like when you have it work and it's actually very seamless. Um, but it, like, isn't Oster purely just meant to be kind of like this replicate of Twitter, um, decentralized censorship resistance version, or is there like, could it be like, you know, YouTube replicates itself on Noster? Like, because like you saw, I suppose what I'm getting at here, well, the first part of it is, yeah, is it just the Twitter bit? But like you saw, you know, you have all these platforms like Rumble and Gab and like Odyssey and all these, and they're all kind of flawed really, because, you know, they do have sent big central points of failure. Um, is Noster the protocol to suck all everything like that in and run it through it? Or is it just Twitter? Well, so 
it can it can literally do anything you want it to. Since at, at its basic level, it is just so simple. It it it's really just authentication. You know, think of a username and password, but it's your private key and your public key. So your profile uh, data with your public key, your private key, and then it's text. So anything you want to build on top of that, you can. Right now, everybody wants to have a Twitter replacement to have a social network. So that is the main use case right now. So all of these clients like Domus and Amethyst, that's what I use because I'm an Android person as well. And on the web, I use snort.social and, and Nostr Nostr nostrogram.co. So all of these clients, they generally speaking mimic Twitter like you said. Uh, that's just because that's what people want right now. But we're starting to see some other use cases for it. So – there just this week we had a cl a client called uh, what was it Hobla dot speak I believe and it is a blogging platform like kind of like uh, like Medium or Substack something like that where you can do long form content it, it's supported by Markdown so you can do images and in, in text formatting and people can you know, uh, subscribe, you know, like your post, they can zap your post, which we'll talk about zaps here in a little bit. Um, they can interact, comment with your post. So it's very much like Medium. So, but, but this operates across Noster. It uses your Noster profile, but it uses a different kind, a different type of message. So those really long form like articles, blog posts won't show up in your Twitter feed. It's still the same protocol, but there are different sections of it where your Twitter protocol uses mess uses messages over here, and your blog uses messages over here. You know, it's it, it they're they're related, but they're not seen on the same client. So you'll have different clients for different things. There's also another client that is um, NOS. It's called uh, NOSBin. NOSBin.com. And it's just a paste bin. Maybe you've been to paste bin before. You just pasted some text, like, almost like a public note keeping platform. So you can use it to keep notes. You know, nothing that you'd want. You don't want to put like passwords or anything in, in, like that. <laughs> but just if you know, just to keep notes of you know, random things you're working on. That's no big deal. Maybe you're going to use it for like bookmarks or something like that, or, or just or, or for code snippets to share to a friend if you're a developer, things like that. People were talking about building. Um, a LinkedIn replacement, a Linktree replacement, and the biggest one is a GitHub replacement, all built on the Nostra protocol. So now you had mentioned YouTube. So along those lines, YouTube or maybe like an Instagram, something like that could absolutely be built. But remember, Nostra is just text. So you would need some place uh, to host images and to host videos. So if you wanted to build this YouTube replacement, you'd have to have a very robust file streaming, you know, video streaming service. And then you would just use Noster to handle the authentication and to handle like uh, the the profile metadata, the the about page, you know, on your on your profile, users commenting on your video, things like that. But the actual content of the, the video, like the video image file, that, that, that stuff, the images, those things need to be hosted and linked to. But that doesn't mean that somebody couldn't build that. They can build an all-in-one service. You know, they could build a, a new YouTube and build that infrastructure. And then they can charge users for it if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get. Yeah, because it's it's, um, it's already that case with like you know your profile pictures or your header or whatever. You have to there's some service that you just literally paste in. Uh, you just host your picture there and it just pulls it back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So it's so, a little different because clients handle this th that differently. Like on uh, some clients, they'll have a built-in image uploader, and some clients won't. So it's a, it's kind of confusing if new people uh, join and they're using one client and you're telling them how it works and they're like I don't have an image upload button you know <laughs> but we're still you know we're still early and clients are getting a little better at handling 
the, these type of things, and they're adding more and more features. The majority of the popular ones now have a, a built-in image upload. I don't think actually Domus does, but Amethyst does, um, and Snort does, Iris does, uh, Nostagram does. So yeah, we're early, and they're going to keep adding these type of features as users want them. I think Will has talked about adding this to, to Domus uh, in the future as well. Mm -hmm. So just with regards to distribution of information, because like I've I noticed on, so it's obvious with Twitter now, Twitter are doing all kinds of things, their algorithms, like, you know, you're probably not, you know, with the manipulation of information, you, like you don't really know, you're just at the behest of the, whatever they want to show you really. But like, yeah. with, re with regards to Noster at the moment, or at least with Amethyst, it kind of seems that it might be a little bit of the opposite problem. Like you just kind of see a lot of maybe irrelevant stuff. Yeah, My it, yes. it's, it, it, it's interesting because we don't like algorithms because they service what somebody else wants us to see. But at the same time, the algorithms allowed us to see popular content, even though maybe it was posted an hour ago. Right now, if I want to see somebody's posts from an hour ago on Noster, I have to scroll down <laughs> depending on how many people I follow. If I follow a thousand people, I might have to scroll through a thousand posts if they were posting <laughs> over the past hour to see your popular post. I may never see it. No matter how good it is, I may never see it because I wasn't on Noster at that time. But Twitter, if your post is popular enough, they'll bring it up to the, the front of the line and I'll see it. So it, it has its, you know, it has its good and its bad. Uh, it's good because it allowed us to see posts that we missed, but it's bad because certain content can be suppressed and, you know, who's to say what should and shouldn't be, you know, that that's a problem that we have. So I, I think that, uh, I think we're going to need something along those lines right now. There is, at least one, at least one website that I know of. It's nosterview.com. My son actually found that website when he was at school, wanting to look at Noster because he knew his dad was using Noster, and he Googled it, and somehow this website came up, and he came home and told me about it. He's like, "Dad, they didn't block Noster at school. I'm probably getting him in trouble here." <laughs> but, <laughs> and I was like, I, "I'm like, oh, they didn't, huh?" And they told me about this website. That you go to you go to nosterview.com and they show people that are trending and they show topics that are trending. So eventually, we'll probably see these things in clients too. Like I don't think uh, they'll be f uh, first and foremost, like front and center, because the majority of users don't want that. But we're starting to see right now, as you follow more and more people, you miss things, and it, it gets harder to see the the popular content. So I think that we will need a trending and we will need a popular uh, page, you know, similar to, to ha what Twitter has. But I do like the, the fire hose, but I think it's nice to be able to go and see the other side, too, when you're looking for things that you missed. As long as, you know, the uh, the algorithms, for the most part, I bet, will be open source because everything else across Nostra is open source. So we'll be able to, to take a look and see what people were doing. If some client is doing something, you know, mischievous, people will know right away and they won't use that client. You know, that, that, that's the beauty of open source. You'll have people pick that, that software apart. And if they're doing something shady, they, they won't, you know, we'll broadcast it. We'll talk about it. We won't use the shady client. We'll go elsewhere where someone's doing something that's more transparent and it's out in the open. Yeah, 100%. That makes sense. So, yeah, I think it does make sense. The important thing would be that people have the choice and that they can see, they can go in between. But then it's like, like, I would personally, like, I'd like to go in between, but I'd like to, you know, kind of have it curated so that kind of like how Twitter does it. But again, I have a big problem with how Twitter does it because it's not open source and you know they're doing all kinds of things to like, you know, the, all the people that were shadow banned, for example, the past two, three years. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just a huge, huge, huge problem. But at the other side of it, it is actually quite useful. So yeah, look, it'd be great if clients... Yeah, so what you're saying is like clients will probably implement this functionality with time if you want it to be. 
probably yeah yeah like we're we're already starting to see these at least on two clients these type of you know algorithms or you know slowly and right now they're just for um relay management to help people that don't understand relays like i was mentioning earlier so we're starting to see that but and those are beneficial but I really think, you know, as people see those things are beneficial, we'll probably see some of that start to spill over into other things like trending topics or popular posts type things like that. And as long as they're transparent and as long as we, you know, you, you have a, a uh, way to turn them on or turn them off or to view them on different feeds, things like that, I, I think people will, will respond well to it because it'll, it'll give people a choice. And that's the thing that, you know, that we're – we're oddly not used to having on other networks, you know, it's, it's their way or, or you don't use it. So now if, I, you know, if, if Jack's client is doing something that I don't like, that's fine. I'll use Derek's client. Derek doesn't do that. You know, like the free market wins out there. Cause then Jack's like, huh, no one's using my client anymore. Maybe I should do this differently. You know, I, I think, I think we'll be okay. It's, it's really wild how, open source software really fuels, you know, um, equality and, and inclusion because it's very, very transparent. I mean, that, that's the whole yeah. nature of it. Yeah, it's actually, look, it's, it's kind of doing a similar thing to Bitcoin with regards money and incentives, but it's doing it with social media. So, um, just a question around that then. So like how does, like I totally understand that Noster, you know, it's just protocol. It's not even remotely political. Like it's not a platform or anything. Um, how do like, so, so first of all, like the growth of Noster, but like fueling it, what, what's it growing at? Like it's crazy growth at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it really, so it really took off back in mid-December when, Jack Dorsey tweeted about it because Jack Dorsey tweeted out that he was donating money to um, what was it Signal? I, I don't remember exactly. I apologize. He, he was donating money to something, and he said, "Hey, what other projects should I look at? What, what other projects need funding?" And someone suggested Noster, so he so he checked out Noster, and he's like, "Hey, this is cool." So now everyone on Twitter was talking about Noster on, with Jack. And so people were starting to check it out. People were starting to check it out. And then Elon Musk bans Noster uh, like a week later because we said that – he said any – you're no longer allowed to link your profile on other social networks. That, that includes Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Noster. And immediately 300 million people on Twitter said, what the hell's Noster? Because <laughs> – you, you you just named the three largest social networks that have billions of users and Noster. What the hell is this Noster? Like, like what a dumbass! Like he he literally advertised that 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 this thing that nobody had ever heard of was as good as something that has two billion users. Like wild. So immediately everyone, you know, went not everyone, but immediately tons of people went to check out Noster. And, you know, growth has been kind of exploding really since then. There's been a few events, like when Edward Snowden joined Noster, he tweeted about it, and there was a huge spike in growth. Um, whenever the Domus app hit the Play Store, because it, it wasn't on just like the test flight, like the beta test flight, whenever it hit um, the uh, main app store, it, it blew up. And it blew up in popularity because now everybody could, everybody could uh, install it, and it blew up. And there's been you know small events then around the Bitcoin community when certain uh, large Bitcoiner accounts announce that they're moving the Noster or they created a Noster account. Um, growth then spikes usually for the next few days. But it, it's kind of interesting to really figure out. Like there's a bunch of different metrics you can look at to see. Um, what? How many users are using Noster? But since anybody and everybody can create a set of keys, a set of private and public keys, including bots, including people just testing a client, and every time they test a client, maybe they generate new keys. 
So it's kind of hard to tell how many users are really there, but we're approaching 3 million keys that are writing events. That means that they're doing, they're making posts, they're updating something. They're doing, they're doing something. So there's 3 million keys. Now, does that mean there's 300, there's, there's 3 million users? Probably not because I probably have a dozen keys that I've created myself where there for a while I was testing every single Android client that there was and I was using a different key for every client. You know, so I probably have a dozen a dozen keys myself and there's you know, there's probably hundreds, if not thousands, of people that have done the same thing. So that's probably not the best metric. But then you get down and you look at, well what about profiles that have bio information? Profiles that, you know, put their user ID, put their NIP zero five ID, their their bio, their about me, you know, set up a profile picture, things like that. Well, there's, um, uh, I'm just looking right now, there's almost 750,000 profiles that have at least bio information. So I'm like, okay, well, that's probably more accurate. But then I'd say, well, on all my burner profiles, hmm, half of them I set. I set profile data, you know, I, Derek's burner account or something like that, you know, so I at least put something in there. So I'm like, okay. So then you're like, all right, all right. Well, what about profiles that have a contact list? That means profiles that are following people and people that are following them. So it's a better case of probably not a bot. And that's a little bit lower. That's down to about 600,000. So we're, we're maybe, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know if that's, that's accurate, but maybe it, half a million users it's kind of hard to tell because uh, it's kind of the nature of the beast here it's anybody and anybody can create accounts or i'm sorry create keys and it's <laughs> and it's really private and it's really open so you don't know really how many accounts because anybody can run a relay and these statistics that i'm looking at that's only statistics from relays that this website knows about so if there's, uh, let's say in China, there's people running private relays in China behind the firewall, and they have their own like little segregated Noster over there, we'll never know about it. We'll never know it exists because they're on a separate like separate segment of Noster, and that you know there could be a you know half a billion <laughs> Noster users in China. We never know. Um, <laughs> but but if you look at certain metrics like the activity, right? So you look at the amount of content or notes and events that are being published, and you look at the amount of zaps that are being sent, you can clearly see a trend, a rising trend in content being created, and you can see you know, activity in, in all the different t types of messages that are types of messages that are called kinds, the, the kinds of messages that are, are being generated. And you can see that there's you know, significant growth. Like it's it, it's growing, and it it's, it comes in waves, but it, it's generally speaking not really slowing down. It's pretty active, and I think it's going to continue to do that for the foreseeable future. I, I think that as more people realize how important censorship resistant social communication is, and realize that things are getting better. Like clients are only weeks if not months old you know and and people join and they realize that the clients are so much better than they tried two months ago you know like two months ago maybe people tried them out like ah, oh, this this doesn't work too well well you know what check back two months later because things have vastly vastly improved and that, and that's going to keep happening so in another couple months another six months things are going to be so different that we're not even going to be able to tell uh, it, it's yeah. going to be like completely different. I'm I'm sure, and people that don't like Noster now, they may love it in six months. So I, I think that, you know, hate to keep saying the name of the podcast, you know, still early, but <laughs> it, it's it's still early, you know, and I I really think that there's so much potential for growth because as we as you you asked, uh, what are people using Noster for? Well, they're using it for Twitter, a uh, Twitter replacement now. But, but what about whenever we get an, an open source, decentralized, nobody owns it, GitHub replacement? 
Like every, I don't know why every single software developer wouldn't want to use that. That I, I don't know why they wouldn't. And that immediately onboards like the entire tech community right there. So Reddit. yeah, I, I think that growth won't slow down for a long time. Reddit's another big one as well. Like there's a lot of problems with censorship there. Yeah, there's there is a a Reddit replacement. It's not very popular though. Um, I used it two months ago when I first signed up, and it wasn't very active. Um, Maybe I should check it out again. Yeah, it's just something that I was like, "Oh, cool, it's there's a, a Reddit monster, is it? you know." And then, yeah, yeah, it wasn't an, it wasn't incredibly popular, but I think uh, I think it might be good to revisit it just to check it out and to let people know that. I mean, it's it, it's there. I mean, I, I'm curious as to what it what the development on it has been like. I, I haven't checked it out. I've been I've been busy checking out other things on Noster. There's so many. Like every day, there's a new client. I just saw one this morning. This new client called Broadcaster, and oh, the UI, the user interface looks really, really, really slick. I, I created my burner account on it, so there you go. There's another burner account for me. <laughs> but uh, but I need to play around with it more and and check it out. And I'm, I'm sure there'll be another client next week to check out. Yeah, yeah. But just on your so on your first point there, you're saying check back in six months or two months or whatever. Like that's actually what happened to me. So like I got set up in a property last week, but I tried it two weeks before on Amethyst and like it was actually unusable, whatever. I don't know, is it the version of Android I'm running or something? But I just like, oh my God, this is so bad. And then I said, look, I give this another shot two weeks later and it was just pretty seamless. Like it was it was very impressive how fastly it improved. Yeah. Um. So yeah, to- totally get your point there. But so just following on from the growth question then, I, I have no I haven't heard anyone talk about this. I know people have to spoke about it, but I haven't heard anything. Um spam and content moderation. Like how so I presume content moderation is sort of addressed with the relay issue. Like you can just unfollow relays if you don't like the content that's there. Yeah. S- spam that yeah, so just those two things. So about a month ago so about a, a month into my foray on Noster we started seeing spam for the first time, and it it showed up mostly in the in the the global feed. And what the global feed is, it's every post from people that you're not following on the set of relays that you are reading information from. So it's people you're not following on relays that that you're on. And we just start seeing tons and tons of spam. The easiest and quick quickest fix for that is you just unfollow the spammer's relay. But you know if they're spamming all the relays you use, that that doesn't work. So another quick fix was to implement a paywall. So we started to see paid relays where you had to pay a certain amount of Bitcoin to be able to um, use and gain admission access to write events to that relay. And that, that that's really, I think, the best thing that we've seen to restrict spam is paid relays. There's several dozen paid relays now, and they're all really cheap, ranging from 1,000 Satoshis, which is like a, a quarter, you know, really, really cheap. It's just a simple paywall. To some that are fifteen thousand, twenty thousand satoshis. Again, just a you know a couple dollars worth, not a whole lot of money, but it gives you a paywall to prevent spam, and it allows you to pay for a service that you're using. It allows you to pay your relay operators a cert, um, for for using you know service that they're providing. So it's twofold beneficial there. So that that helps with with spam. It, prevent, it gives us a paywall, and it allows you to turn off certain relays for global. Not all clients support this, but Amethyst does. And earlier you mentioned that relay management and some of the things with it were kind of confusing at first. And, and, and this is one of the things I think is confusing with that is you'll see a bunch of icons in Amethyst for relay management, and you really don't know what they are. Well, the globe icon – if you tap that globe, it turns off global feed for that relay. So what 
what you can do is you can turn on global feed only for paid relays so that so you turn it off then for all free relays that you use and now your global feed is essentially spam free unless a spammer decides to pay the admission fee and generally speaking they're they're not doing that right now in the future they might um, then maybe relays will have to up their their fee uh, their entry fee a little bit or relays will start charging per post which you, you know maybe you'll pay uh, a satoshi a post or three satoshis a post who knows now uh, that that can be all implemented it's already in the relays you can turn that on right now nobody is doing that as far as i'm aware now the second part of your question about content moderation so this loosely doesn't exist and i say it that way because if i see something i don't like like spam a uh, bunch of porn in my feed, which which we saw a month ago. Saw some really creative things that I had never seen before. So it was educational, <laughs> at least. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I I was able to 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 mute uh, those those users, and that allowed me to not to not see them. They can still post. Their content 100% exists, but it's more of a personal filter for me. And all I'm saying is, is that I'm muting them. I'm filtering that content out. They're still, they're still posting on my, you know, on my, on my feed. They're still, if, if they were commenting on my um, posts that I made, like, they're still there. They're, I'm not censoring them. They're still able to do it. I just don't see it because I chose to either mute or block. It both words are interchangeable because there is no blocking. Like a block is just a mute. But um, people people call them block, even though that doesn't exist. It's it's more of a personal filter or a mute. And these mute lists are shared between clients that implement muting the same way. So if I were to sign into a different client, I would still have my same muted users. But if that client does not support that the the mute list, then all those users that I didn't want to communicate with would now be able to communicate with me. So that, that said, it's loose content moderation. It allows you to be in control of your feed, and whatever you want to do and however you want to be in control doesn't affect anybody else. It's just – it's you. It gives you, you – know, you can be sovereign over your own social feed, which is really cool. And I think that's the type of content moderation that we really should have had um, on Twitter. I mean there's a lot of people that I, that I would have muted. You know, that I don't want to. I don't want to see them. Fuck them. I'll mute them. You know, and good. That, that's good. That's good. And the people that want to see it, they can. Like, that's. You know, in 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 that regard, there are some things that. That you know. Relay operators or. Clients will start to ban in the future. You know, if you see people posting. Um, you know, blatantly violent or blatantly, you know, racist hate type things. Clients, clients may choose to block that person, not allow that pub key or IP address to connect to their client or connect to their relay. You know, but due to the openness of the protocol, um, you know, they're not censored. They're censored from mm -hmm. that relay, that client. They can just go elsewhere, and they can still post their, you know, their, their things that. I'm considering racist and hateful, you know, and and uh, the, I don't see them. They're elsewhere. They're, they're not on the, you know, on the same one that I'm on, maybe. Um, yeah. And, and one more thing about that. So Domus, the Domus app, had to implement a, an EULA to the App Store, and that's basically how moderation would work there if somebody would get reported on domus you know apple would want to see that user to be removed from from domus um banned or something you know i i don't know how exactly they would handle it but it basically says you won't do these you know you won't post these type of things uh, in, in the eula and if if you do um i i don't know exactly how Will would handle that, but I believe he would have to to remove them from 
access to uh, his relay. But one thing that we had talked about before that I, I mentioned to him whenever he was doing, whenever he was creating the EULA, I said, well, maybe you don't actually have to, to, to censor them, you know, to, to ban them. You just ban everybody else from seeing them. Right, like you're not you're you're not banning the user. You're you're just banning people from from seeing that content. Basically, you're you're mute, you know it's like a, a mass relay mute almost. So I, I don't know uh, which way he would handle that, depending on what Apple says. You know, uh, um, maybe maybe they won't care because users have their own controls now. Users can mute their own uh, content posts, whatever. So users are in full control. So maybe. Maybe that's good enough for Apple. I don't know. Okay, that's that's really interesting. So, like, spinning on to Damas then in relation to that, like, an Amipest. Like, are these businesses? Is their goal of monetizing these things at the end of the day, or is it just like what you? I suppose what is there a business struct like incentive structure around creating businesses? Around, I suppose there is, like, but yeah, yeah. So ads stuff like that. So. With Amethyst, I don't know. I haven't talked to Vitor, specifically the developer, about this. But Will has been very public about this. He, you know, wants to come up with a premium service, and he wants to charge, you know, for the premium service. And I don't know what features that he'll implement for premium, but he wants to make money. He's spending hundreds of dollars a month running the server infrastructure for Damas. So. He needs to be paid. You can only live off donations and people's generosity for so long. So he needs to get paid. You know, he's providing a service. I think he should get paid for it. And I, I think that he's going to do that one way or another with his um, premium service. Now, for businesses, I don't see why multiple clients someday couldn't exist with – these paid models, they would offer, you know, premium services to their users, similar to what um, what my business Nostraplebs does. So we'll, we'll backtrack a little bit here. So back in December, I created my Noster keys, and one of the features of Noster is you can create an, an email address-like feature for your public key. It's a unique identifier that gives you a human-readable format for your public key. So if you're familiar with Bitcoin, Bitcoin addresses, you're not going to remember all those numbers and letters. They're too complicated. So public keys look the same way on Noster. They're complicated, and no one's going to remember them. So you need a way to easily remember them and easily identify them. So there's a human readable format. It's a NIP05, and NIPs are Noster improvement possibilities. And or actually, it's not a Noster proposal, is it? Is it improvement? Well, no, pr that pr proposals for Bitcoin, Bitcoin improvement proposal. But may maybe it's just Noster improvement possibility. So it, it's a uh, it's a way to enhance Noster. So the enhancement number five, NIP05, allows these email address human-readable formats for your for your key. So I added one for my name, and I had a bunch of Bitcoin buddies. They're like, hey, Derek, wow, that's awesome. Can you do that for me? I want one of those. I want a check mark beside my name. And I said, oh, yeah, I think I could actually do this for you. And I start thinking. I'm like, oh, why don't I just buy a domain name? And start putting my friends' public keys on there. So I did that for like three or four friends. And I said, hey, I got you set up. You have your ID. Awesome. And then those three or four friends had, you know, three or four friends that saw that they had it. And, hey, how'd you get that? Talk to Derek. And a light bulb went off. And I'm like, oh, I, I might be able to turn this into like a, a little business here where I could – provide a service for people, create a, uh, an identity service for them, charge them just a small nominal fee, and host their NIP05 ID for them, allow them to register register an ID and host it for them. And I did, and it blew up. And then now there's you know, a, a, probably a couple dozen. Nostra Plebs is still the largest 
um, identity provider uh, on Noster, but there's there's multiple, we have multiple competitors now. So as a business, we we have different services for users besides the the identity services. We do Lightning address forwarding, and eventually we'll we'll do full blown um, Lightning wallets, most likely. Um, multiple ways to do that. We've talked about we're we're doing um, directory services. Um, we are allowing users to go in and manage, you know, their their profile themselves. We're going to have a paid relay, but uh, the, you have to be a Nostra Plebs member to be able to use our relay. So it's a service specifically for our users. And then um, we're going to do some interesting things with a Twitter Spaces replacement that we're calling Noster Nests. Nests. It's a uh, like clone, basically, of Twitter Spaces or Clubhouse, and we'll do certain things in there that it's wide open for everybody on Noster to use. But uh, maybe if you want to create a room that lasts longer than an hour, maybe you have to pay a Lightning invoice to be able to use. Um, our members will be able to have rooms that are um, have a vanity URL, a custom profile URL, and, and things like that. Just just simple perks that are worth a, you know you know a, a couple thousand satoshis to people, and they they pay they can pay to uh, be able to have access to these features. So being able to build on Noster, providing small perks for people, small enhancements, quality of life enhancement services that don't exist elsewhere. I think that's a very simple business, and that's the business model that, that we've adopted. But beyond that, as I keep mentioning, Noster is just text. So if you want to do anything with content that's video or you know, image hosting, you're going to have to pay for that. You're going to have to pay for that. So there's already business models that are popping up where uh, people run file and video hosting services and you pay to host the, the content on their, on their server. So that'll be another business model. Maybe there'll be um, private events that are held on certain relays and you have to pay access, access to that. Maybe we'll have clients that are pay only clients and you have to pay to be able to use that client. You know, maybe it's a, one-time fee, maybe it's a monthly fee, I don't know. Um, I think that turns into a pretty powerful client or service whenever you can offer a client, you offer a relay and an image hosting, file hosting service all in one for your users. Those are the three the three main aspects of, of Nostra that people want. They want a client that's, that works well, they want a client that can host images, and they need, they need a relay. And if you can provide a, a stable and fast service for all three of those, people will pay for it. Like people on Noster, at least now in the early stages, understand the proof of work. You know, we're, you know, the majority of us are Bitcoiners. So we understand proof of work. We understand that not everything is free. You know, we, we understand that Twitter was free because Twitter used our data and monetized our engagement to fight each other basically. Um, you know, we 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 understand that, so so we're okay paying, you know, paying a little bit of money for using something that we like that is providing us value. You know, value for value is really big on Noster. So I I think that we'll see a lot of unique businesses pop up, things that we weren't used to paying before on social media, but now on Noster will be pay services. Yeah. I, I actually think it's actually important that like there is a lot of paid stuff because otherwise the ecosystem is ultimately going to, you know, die. So like, or not have the growth that it should have. So like, it's just, I suppose the question was geared around. Yeah, it, it's answered perfectly, but like it's how the business models interact with Noster in that they don't create perverse incentives to kind of ruin the thing. And it sounds like, yeah, that's not really it remotely an issue because you can just leave and use yeah. another client or version or exactly. whatever. Exactly. If, if somebody's doing something overcharging or doing something that you don't like, that's fine. Users will go elsewhere. And they can't, you yeah. know, as long as there's viable services 
And if they and if there aren't, someone will build them because the, the greatest thing about Nostra is you can it's because it's open is you can build it to be any type of platform, any type of social protocol, anything that you want. It you 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 can build it to be what you want if you're a developer. So it, it's 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 really unique. Yeah. So just to be clear, because like I kind of have an idea what you're talking about when you're talking about like the NIP zero five NIP zero five identifiers. And that's what you provide with Noster Plebs. Yes. Is that are you talking about like a Twitter handle there where you can just like type in my name and in the search bar and it comes up or what? Yeah, somewhat. So let's say uh, Jack, you want your username to be at Jack. Well, there's already Jack Dorsey, and then there's another Jack that I'm friends with on there that he's the developer behind Nosbin. He's Jack Shikani. You know, he uses at Jack. Maybe you use at Jack, and Jack Dorsey uses at Jack. There's three at Jacks. How do I know which one is the Jack that I want to tag? It's confusing because it's open, and everybody can have the same username, which is confusing. So we need a way to be able to to identify people. And immediately you would think, oh, well, everybody has a different public key. Well, that's fine, but – I don't. I can't remember 30 numbers and letters for everybody's public key that I'm following. So we need a human readable format, some easy way to identify a user, and that's what these NIP05 IDs do. So depending on your client, it varies a little bit on implementation, but you should be able to type in, like, uh, for example, myself, you would type in, like to tag me at Derek Ross at nosterplebs.com, and that would be me. I'm the only Derek Ross at nosterplebs.com on all of Noster. It's like an email address. It's unique. There's nobody else that has that. Now, there could be Derek Ross at superawesomedomain.com. There could be Derek Ross at anotherawesomedomain.com, but they're not Nosterplebs. Derek Ross at Nosterplebs is me. So it gives us some ways to identify people and easily find people and make them searchable and recognized. You know, for example, Jack Dorsey, I keep talking about him, but he he, he uses the NIP05 uh, jack at cash.app. Everyone knows ca that he's the CEO of cash, of cash App. Everyone, as soon as they see that, they recognize that that's him. So if you are a you, know, you work at a well-known company, you have your own business, you're a celebrity, you have your own domain name, you should use your own domain name. You should use something that's recognizable uh, because everyone will know that that is really you. For everybody else that doesn't have the time or the technical skill to set it up and you just want to click a button and easily be found – I created a service for that as well as other people have now too that allows you to use these identity providers. And and not all identity providers are the same. Like I don't want to keep shilling what I do, but we we offer, you know, tech support, we offer, you know, knowledge based articles, um, as well as all the other services I talked about. We we do these things because, you know, we operate as a as an actual business. We're not just a website that allows anybody and everybody to register. So your identity providers will eventually be, if they're not already starting to be, reputation-based. Some will be seen better than others. Some will be seen as more reputable. Some will be like the spammer one that will allow anybody and everybody to register. Some will have a paywall. Some won't have a paywall. You know, and some will have additional services. Some won't have additional services. It all depends on, you know, uh, what what the what the business model is of of the provider. Yeah. Okay. I understand that now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It sounds like it's well needed. <laughs> so. Yeah. It, it's not perfect, but it's better than not having it. I'll say that. Yeah. So. Okay, so this is probably like a, a bit of a, a big um, question, but like how does – so Nostr and Bitcoin are totally unrelated in terms of like the protocol. Any, It's just purely Bitcoin has been integrated to Nostr as the kind of native payment mechanism on the platform. Um, is that correct? 
Yes. And the only reason that that is the case is because Bitcoiners built Noster. Like the, everybody, the, you know, at least in the beginning up until now, the majority, if not all developers, were Bitcoiners. So of course they're going to integrate, you know, what they already use, and it, it makes sense for micropayments. So Lightning is integrated all across Noster. Various various faucets in Noster Noster support and have Bitcoin integrated from pasting an invoice to it automatically creating a payment widget. Where if you, on Facebook or Twitter, if you paste an LNBC one or an LN URL, you, you paste a, a payment address for Lightning, it'll just be a long string of text. And sometimes people will take a screenshot and post the QR code instead. But if, if uh, on Noster, depending on your client, the majority of them will support if you paste uh, a, that string of text for your Lightning invoice, it automatically generates a, a widget for you so you can copy or you can scan with a QR code. So that was the first integration that we had. The second integration is is that you can visit people's profiles and you'll generally see a little lightning icon. So you can send somebody money. You want to, you know, I want to pay uh, Jack Starling. I go to Jack's profile. I click on Jack's um, lightning icon and I can send you money. Now, to some extent, that exists on Twitter. It's not global though it's not rolled out around the world but with Noster it is it's you know it's rolled out everywhere yeah, well every client that supports it <laughs> but anyone it doesn't matter where you're at in the world it'll work then the next integration that we have is lightning tips now lightning tips allow you to tip based on a post so every single note every single post that you see in your feed depending on your client the majority support this will have a little lightning bolt and you click that little lightning bolt and whatever you think that post is worth worth so if you make a funny meme you know or somebody makes a funny meme and so or somebody has a great long form post very informative or you just like what they say instead of clicking that like button you can send us send them some satoshis. You want to send them a thousand sats, twenty one sats, a million, whatever, whatever you feel that that piece of content is worth. You can send them money, send them value for the value that they gave you. It's value for value built right in. And recently, a couple of weeks ago, um, a few developers released something called uh, Nip fifty seven or or Zaps, and all Zaps are are lightning enabled and Noster aware tips. So it, it's exactly like a lightning tip, which I just described, except that the lightning wallet knows that Noster exists and communicates back to Noster the amount that was tipped. So there are some privacy implications there, but if you want, you can have the amount of Satoshis that that post earned be displayed and tallied up so you'll know the value of a post based on the zap amount that is displayed right beside the likes so maybe it has a thousand likes but maybe it's got a million satoshis so you know you know likes don't really mean anything some people don't like the things at all they don't click it but if you really or they gain you know likes can be gamed bought bots can click them and these type of things and it really likes don't really show value but a zap that's displayed on the post will show you how much that post is worth, how much value has that post gained. So it's really cool. It like content creators, people that you know, streamers, people that foodies that post food pics, recipes, you know, whatever, whatever content you create, you can post it on Noster, and people will literally pay you. They'll they'll give you value for the value that you gave them. Like it, it's it's really building the value for value economy on Noster and we're, we're, we're doing Bitcoin. We're, we're using Bitcoin for it now because it's an open protocol and anybody can build anything they want. That doesn't mean it'll always be Bitcoin only at some point. I guarantee you there'll be some developer that maybe likes, 
you know, Solana, XMR, uh, something, and they build a client that is integrated with, with uh, you know, this altcoin, this shitcoin. Well, you know, it's open. They can do it, and, and I'm sure we'll see it. There is one relay that I'm aware of that accepts Monero for payment instead of Lightning um, right now. That you know, next week there could be two. In a month there could be something that accepts stacks. Who knows? Um, it, it's open, and and I, I think the key takeaway here is is that even though you know Bitcoiners built it, and in the beginning everybody was using Bitcoin. And I hope it stays that way. But because it's an open protocol, anybody can build anything they want to. We should be happy that they can build anything they want to. But we don't have to use their non-Bitcoin clients and their non-Bitcoin relays. You know, If they want to build their own little pocket corner of Noster over here somewhere that, that uses Ethereum, you know, that's fine. Go ahead and do it. I'm not going to go over there. I'm not going to use those relays. I'm not going to use those clients. And I, you know, in the the half a million people that are on Nostra now that, you know, that uh, don't use those things, you know, they probably won't either. Um, yeah. But it, this is how open protocols work, open networks work, and open software works. Anybody can do anything. Yeah, well, I think it is very important. Like, you know, get get all the ETH guys, get like the Bankless guys, get get everyone <laughs> on Noster. Um, yeah. Even e even like, I don't know. I don't know how this looks, but like, maybe it happens naturally by itself. But maybe there should be like a concerted sales effort to like go to the people that run like Gab or Rumble. Well, well Rumble's a bit different, as we said, but like, say Gab or like. Um, I don't know, mines or all these old platforms and try and get them to build their own client to plug in. And then it, it's probably going to so happen Mind, anyway. But Mines yeah. actually has integration to Noster. Mines, oh, really? Yeah, Mines runs their own relay. And Mines user content is posted to Noster. And you can, you can write a read. You can read, add the Mines relay as a read-only relay so you can read. So there, there is, there's two-way integration right now with Mines. So, but any any of these open platforms could do that. You know, I've I, I um have I haven't used them before. Uh, uh, Gab or Odyssey or you know uh, Truth Social, you know those type of networks. But if they wanted to keep their own private closed network, but also allow, uh, I mean, think of it as they would run their own private relay, kind of you know, and their own private client. But if they wanted to integrate, um. Nostra, they absolutely could. I mean, anybody can. And f who knows? Maybe in two, three years, Twitter will become an extremely customized uh, Nostra client and relay. You know, where they manage your your uh, username and password, or I'm sorry, through username and password, they manage your public key and your private key. You don't even know you're using Nostra. To you, it looks like Twitter, but all, everything you're saying is posted to Nostra and all the people you're following are using Nostra. You know, you just don't know. Like, but all the any any client, any any all these small little pockets in, in niche uh, social networks that you were talking about, they can all they can all do this. They can all use it and take advantage of it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I, it's just for these things to be important, or for this to work, like you need as as much diverse. You know, you need yeah. everyone. You need it to become what Twitter is today. So. Uh, yep. Pachet, it sounds all positive. I, I agree. I agree. I, I actually, uh, I, I'm not really a fan of Bitcoin ordinals, but I was in a bunch of the chats involving Bitcoin ordinals over the past like two weeks, and I was I was shilling Noster to them. I said, you know what, guys? I said I don't like what you're doing. I don't like I don't like ordinals, but I will tell you that you guys shouldn't use Discord. Like all these NFT communities they all use discord and they all get rugged and they all get hacked and i said you know what you need to do you need to stop using discord you need to build the ordinal nft client that you've always wanted that you've kind of had to piecemeal between twitter and discord build that you know nft bro client that you want on noster and go have your own little corner of noster like i 
I, I think that the more people and the more di different communities and different groups of people that are using Nostra, the better. And we all we all don't have to agree. We all don't have to like the same thing. That's but but different opinions and and diversity is good. Yeah. So, okay, I just have two more questions. Um, then what? One of them. So, like, you obviously you have one of the biggest accounts in Nostra, like tips for growing a Noster? Like, is it the same as Twitter? Or like, how do you get start getting engagement? Like, um, you know, if you're posting on Noster, no one's, I know, I know I talked to someone the other day, they were posting and like, no one was seeing anything. So they just said they're going to not post anymore. And I said, Oh, look, give it a stay with it or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, it might hurt decentralization a little bit in the beginning, but you do need to add some of the bigger relays. You know, you do because if, if you're posting on a relay that has nobody on it, well, you're not going to see anybody. So add a bigger relay or two and as well as some you know smaller ones, add a add a paid, re, you know, add a, a paid relay and a free relay. You, you want to, you know, I, I believe paying for content. So I, I think um, a nice way is to follow people that you already follow on Twitter. A lot of people have linked their Twitter accounts to their Noster accounts. So if you visit noster.directory, that website, you can find, you can put in your username on Twitter and you can find everybody that you know on Noster. And you can click a few buttons and follow everybody. Uh, I, I did that. It's really, it's a really easy way to follow people that you already know. But the absolute best way and how I grew my account in the early days, even though we're still early, but uh, is <laughs> is uh, the the global feed. Now the global feed is filled with a lot of spam now, but there's a similar feed called the friends of friends. So it's it's people or, or conversations. Different clients call them sometimes conversations. The conversations feed on Amethyst or Domus is comments of people that you're following on other people's posts. So it allows you to join the conversation. It allows you to, to join the conversation and see what they're saying. So you just start commenting on other people's comments and engaging. Engaging is the largest way to find people because if they're not following you, they're not going to see your posts. So you, you're going to be posting into the void because they don't see them. But if you go to the conversations tab, the friends of friends comments, and you just start commenting on and engaging and interacting with people, you'll you'll see that people will find you and and people will see you. Another tip, um, you know, is zapping content that you find interesting. Like if you really want to get somebody to follow you. Uh, you know, zapping them on their post, they'll see it. You know, the, uh, generally speaking, they'll see it, and then it 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 allows uh, you to say, "Hey, I'm over here. Look, I just pay. I just gave you some value for your for your post." Um, I I think that that's maybe an extreme example, but it does work. Somebody somebody sent me a hundred thousand sats last night, and I was like, "Oh man, I'm not following this person. I need to be following this person. They just." They just gave me 100,000 sats, so I, I followed them right away. And I was like, man, why wasn't I following this person before that? Um, I, I think just engagement. Like, it really is that the community is so small right now. There's, you know, not even a million users, most likely. And it, it does feel like the void unless you're engaging with people. So get out there and comment on other people's posts. and and once you know once you have people that are starting to follow you then you can you know post your own stuff but engagement's key. engagement and value are key yeah do you know what would be really good i just thought of it there like twitter doesn't have it but just amethyst if it like had like a one click follow so you didn't even have to go on their profile because i think there can be a bit of a lag with like relays loading and stuff at the moment so i don't know maybe it's something yeah for, for, for like someone for the android guy or something yeah, you know what, and this is a helpful tip. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with building a following or anything, but since you mentioned relays, in the beginning I thought to find as many people as you as exist on Noster that 
you should add all the relays that you find because the more relays means the more people that can see your posts, right? Now that, while that is true, but that also means that you're now connecting to every single relay. So every event that you do, every like, every time you comment, every post you create, whatever, that's now being sent to every relay. And when you load your feed, you're loading from every relay. So you essentially flood yourself by making connections to 30, 40, 50 relays. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. I did that. Uh, it's just a quality of life tip. I did that, and I used 10 gig of da mobile data on my phone over the course of seven days. From January 1st to January 7th, I got a warning at the end of the week that I was all out of mobile data. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I blew through 10 gig of data in seven days, and I was like, man, I don't, I'm don't. i on Wi-Fi everywhere. How in the hell did I do this? <laughs> well, I, I had 47 relays on my profile. That's how the hell I did that. So don't do that. That's uh, that's a good tip. Um, keep, keep it under 20. You know, somewhere in the teen, low teens is probably best. But besides data usage, speed, like I was saying, you don't want to be updating 20, 30, 40, 50 relays every single time you do something. Keep it low. Uh, lower the better, but you know, tr uh, somewhere around a dozen low teens is probably optimal. I found. Okay, okay, and just like regarding, because I know I was kind of connecting to a lot of kind of dud relays. There wasn't really anything going on. Um, just like, do you have a few good ones you could recommend? Like, I know, I know the good ones are paid ones typically, but like, what are you using? So I use. I'm look at my notes here. I have. Uh, the relays that I'm using here. So I use a handful of paid relays. The paid relays I use are Eden.Noster.Land, Puravita.Noster.Land, and Atlas.Noster.Land. Those three. I also use Relay.OrangePill.Dev, Noster.Milo.LOL, and Noster.Wine. Those are the six paid relays I use. Now for... Um, for free relays, I like to use snort.social and damas.io because those are two of the largest clients, and that's their relays. So you get a lot of new people if you add those relays. Sometimes those relays lag a little bit. Um, sometimes they don't. Uh, one relay that I, I do use and I think is really important is nos.lol. NOS .lol. That relay... It's an aggregator relay where you post to that relay and it sends your posts, your notes and events out to a handful of other top relays. So it allows you to post to one place and then have your, your stuff go elsewhere. It's, and it, it works really, really well. Um, I, I think that there's a handful of other relays that do that. Not too many, but we're getting more and more all the time. Um, I just added one today that does that. They update to like 300 relays, like every single relay. So I, I don't know. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with it because I just added it today. But it's Noster dot Mutiny Mutiny Wallet M U T I N Y Wallet dot com Noster dot Mutiny Wallet dot com. They update to. 300 relays, so which is like every relay there is. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I don't have any experience with it, but maybe next time we chat, I'll be able to tell you if that works. I, I think that, that those type of relays that will be good in the future, ones that aggregate and post other relays, that way it's easy for your content to be found. And you won't have to post somewhere and be like, oh man, there's nobody on the relays I'm using. Where are my friends at? You won't have to to worry about that. Where relays will kind of just be doing what they're at. They're called relays, but they don't really relay content. They don't they don't do that at all. Um, but in the future, we'll have that functionality. Yeah. Okay. Um... That's that's a really good overview. And then just for people like I know, just getting a relay 
it's it's quite simple. So if you're saying like Noster.wine, like I know I use, use that one as well. All you're doing is you're typing Noster.wine into like your Chrome browser or whatever you're using. Yeah. Bring bringing up their page, pasting your public key from your Noster profile, and then you're paying the fee to enter, which they just issue a lightning invoice. You press pay, and then you go back to your Amethyst, and you are typing Noster.wine to add the relay. And then the relay will accept you when it's the lightning invoice associated with your public key is paid. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. You go to the website, you put your public key in, you pay the invoice, then you add the relay, and you can start using it. Okay, cool, cool. That's great. So just to, I suppose, just to wrap up then, um, and this has been really good, Derek. Um, th thanks for the, the overview. But just to clients, like, so Damas is the kind of go-to one for iOS at the moment. Uh, Amethyst for Android. Like, what about desktop? What, what are you thinking? Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> can you repeat the question? Yes. Yeah, so, so, like, I had an interruption, uh, and I forgot. <laughs> I heard what you said, but it, I forgot. Talking about yeah, no wife. problem. Yeah, just iOS is everyone's using Damas at the moment. Android is Amethyst. And correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. Um, what would you recommend? Would you recommend those two for those plat those operating systems or the, other thing? Or yeah, yeah, those are the, the those are the best two that's out there. Now there are a handful of other clients that have come around the past couple weeks, but they need a little more time in the oven. We'll say the <laughs> the. the the, the current client is is really good um, from an, a user experience and user interface standpoint. The onboarding process on current is fantastic. And the coolest thing about current is that it's a Lightning Wallet built into it. So it's a Lightning Wallet and a Nostra client all in one. But it's only a couple weeks old. It isn't very stable and it's a little laggy they had an update that just came out yesterday i haven't tried it yet to see if it's gotten better but since it's only a few weeks old um i'm betting it's going to need another couple weeks so keep that on your radar it is on both android and ios as long as they get the stability fixed and speed fixed it's going to be one of the top clients because the onboarding process is is the best i've seen so far um there's a lot of web clients, I mean, that work well on mobile. Uh, Iris.2 and Snort.social uh, and Nostergram.co. I use Nostergram and Snort all day long on desktop. Um, on mobile, I pretty much stick with Amethyst, but every once in a while I load up Snort on, on, uh, on mobile. But uh, I, I think that We'll, we'll continue to see more clients. I know that there's some other clients that are in the works out there for iOS and Android. Uh, they just they're they're, they're not um, as good yet. Oh, another Android client that actually is good that I completely forgot it slipped my mind. It's called Nosteros. It's not available on Google Play, but you can get it on F Droid and you can get it on. Uh, the developers GitHub. It's Noster OS. Noster OS. It's 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 really good. Like uh, it it's feature rich and it, it runs fairly well. But I I like Amethyst better though. Okay. Okay. That's brilliant. Um. Well. Okay. Look. I think that's kind of everything. Um. So th thanks very much for your time. Just where can people find you if they if if you're still I don't know you I know you're on a bit of sabbatical from Twitter at the moment but like. Your Twitter, your Noster, Noster plebs, where... Yeah, where all right. Well, people. Um, so in, in March, we're doing March off Twitter. Uh, and then maybe <laughs> if we can be off Twitter for a month, maybe we'll just stay off. I don't know. But I'll give you my Twitter because um, I'll be there for a, a couple days still. It's uh, at Derek M. Ross. Now, to find me on Noster is really simple. I'll give you two ways to find me. You can go to the website nosterplebs.com forward slash s forward slash Derek Ross and that'll automatically send you to my Noster profile if you have an app installed on your phone um, 
if you already have the app on your phone and you don't want to go to that website, that's fine. You can just find me by typing in Derek Ross at nosterplebs.com, and that's my NIP05 ID, and you can find me anywhere on Noster with that ID. So if, if I type that into the search bar, you're going to come up. I don't need your input. Is that correct? On Amethyst? Uh, dep- on, on Amethyst? Search on Amethyst just doesn't work that well for me. It's I terrible. Don't kn- <laughs> I, I, like, I don't like it. It's, it, it doesn't work. Um, I, I, I think that search can be better and much improved. Um, if you type Derek Ross at Nostroplebs, I don't think it searches NIP05. I told uh, Veter that I think that he should add that in there. Um, snort it will. If you use Snort and if you use uh, Iris, the two desktop ones, it will. I don't know. I I don't know if Damus. I don't have an iPhone. I don't know if Damus it works. On Astral.Ninja, it'll work on there. Um, yeah. But, yeah, well, uh, by the time this is out, like this, this probably won't be out for number <laughs> for about a week. Maybe it'll be fixed then. But I know just okay. from even searching for end pubs and stuff, it's like um, sometimes it, it work works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, like I like I, I end up like killing the app and restarting it to get search to work, <laughs> and then and tagging sometimes doesn't work on Amethyst either. It's so frustrating when I want to tag somebody and it doesn't work. But Amethyst is only like a month old, so. For it being a month old, it's not you know it's not bad. So yeah, let's let's give it time. We'll check back in another month, and and we'll be like, man, do you remember the time that half this shit didn't work? It's amazing now, and, you know, it's just all gonna work. <laughs> yeah. So okay, then look, thanks very much for your time, Derek. This has been really good, and I look forward to doing it again in the future. Yes, absolutely, Jack. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was great. Brilliant.